Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and this is the 32GQ950, LG's latest gaming monitor. Now I know what you're thinking, not another monitor, well this one is different. It's got a 32 inch 4K HDR display, VRR, G-Sync, FreeSync and is capable of up to 160Hz. Pair that with the 1 millisecond response time, HDMI 2.1 and the awesome new design, it could be one of the most popular monitors in 2022. And as I've been using this for the last month, this is a real hands-on review today, not a first impressions. Okay, so inside the box, it comes with the two part stand. There's the feet and then we've got the arm itself. We also have a box of accessories, which includes an HDMI 2.1 cable, a USB cable, the display port cable, as well as a power brick and plug. There's also this little plastic clip, which is for the cable management, which I will show you later. Now, setting this monitor up is just as easy as every other LG monitor that we've had lately. The main arm of the bracket, well, that attaches to the back of the monitor with a simple click. Then the feet attach to the arm with a single screw that's built in, and then that's it, we're done. So this wouldn't be a gaming monitor if it didn't have at least some gaming focused design. So around the back, we've got this new purple and gray hexagon theme going on. There's the Ultra Gear logo at the top. It's got a kind of a purple foil like texture to it as you move around. On first impressions, the back of this monitor looks quite reflective. But if you look really closely, you can just about see it's made up of tiny little hexagon shapes. And these are all etched into the panel. You'll notice the overall look is more gray than black, which is definitely different to what we've seen before on previous models. Now, not only does this design look awesome, but these little white strips that you can see either side where these are actually LEDs. It means when the monitor is switched on, you'll get an ambient glow on your wall. In the settings, you can actually change or customize them to different colors, or you can turn them off completely. I think this adds a really nice vibe to your monitor, especially when you're gaming at night. And if we look around the edge of the hexagon, it's got some vents here for airflow, and the rear of the stand has some more Ultra Gear branding. Now for a monitor this nice, it's a real shame it's going to be facing towards the wall most of the time. But I imagine at gaming events where you've got loads of these lined up, it's going to look incredible from the back. But without question, this is definitely my favourite monitor design that I've seen from LG. They've done a really good job of keeping the gaming vibe as well as making it look quite clean. And if we turn the monitor around, we've got an almost borderless design on the screen. So three of the sides don't have any hard plastic frame, which gives it a minimal and sleek look. It's only the bottom part of the frame, which is a little bit thicker, and that houses the Ultra Gear logo. Under there, we've got a little control stick type button that you can use to change the settings or turn the monitor on and off. So the GQ950 is a 4K screen with a 3840 by 2160 resolution and it has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It also has a nano IPS panel and HDR1000. So as you'd expect, the image quality or the picture quality is going to look great out of the box. And from using it over the last month, it's safe to say it has some of the best true to life colors I've ever seen on an IPS panel. Whether I've been playing on the PS5 or the Xbox Series X, FPS games or racing games, everything has looked incredibly good. Now, I've been a huge fan of its predecessor, the 27 inch GP950, but I sometimes felt 27 inches was just too small. I have mentioned this before in previous videos. If I could have the same spec in a 32 inch screen, that would be perfect. Well, here we have it. LG says it's got ATW, which is Advanced True Wide. Now, this is a polarizer tech to help reproduce better colors and better blacks. This is obvious when you're watching it straight on, as the colors really do pop. But this feature is designed to make the image even better when you're viewing it at any angle. So as you turn or you move off center, the image is less washed out than what I've seen on other monitors. But not only does the image look great, it's also Display HDR1000 certified, which means it has a peak brightness of 1000 nits. That is a huge step up from other monitors that I've used over the last year. And it really shows when you're gaming, as the difference or contrast between the darkest and the lightest areas are even further apart. And this goes hand in hand with the decent black levels or the black stabilizer option, so the dark areas are not crushed or washed out. The screen does have an anti-glare coating, so playing it in a bright room or near windows is okay, especially with a brighter screen. Now, you're always going to see some kind of glare or reflection, but it's better overall than a glossy screen. So in the room that I'm using it here, I have a window directly opposite this desk. And as you can see, you can just about see it as I move around, but overall, it's pretty good. And you also might wonder if there's any light bleed or IPS glow. Well, viewing it straight on, I haven't seen any notable glow at all. The dark scenes or loading screens are perfect. Obviously, it's not an OLED, so the black areas are not complete black and there are multiple dimming zones across the screen. It's only really when viewing it off center do you notice a little bit of IPS glow but that's expected and not a fault at all. As for the response time and the overall gaming experience on the GQ950 this thing is fast like really fast. 
it's got a predicted one millisecond response time, which by anyone's standard is rapid. You're not going to have any issues with this screen displaying what you want and when you need it. And playing FPS games on this is effortless. I've played some of the best games I've ever played on this monitor. Now, although it does have support for up to 160 hertz when overclocked, it can handle the obvious 144 hertz and 120 hertz. So if you're gaming on a console like me, this is perfect for the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X. With those two consoles, it's a simple plug and play with the monitor and it provides everything that you need. We've got VRR or the variable refresh rate, and that is now supported on both the Xbox Series X as well as the PS5. And then we've got G-Sync and AMD FreeSync if you're gaming on PC. Okay, so now if you press the button under the monitor, you get access to this overlay, and this shows you where the VRR is running and what frame rate you're getting. You can also adjust various other settings like the black stabilizer or which picture mode you want to use. So I've been playing loads of different games to really test this out. So the normal games like Warzone and a bit of Vanguard and even some Apex Legends. I've never really given this game enough of my time, but it actually looks awesome on this monitor. The colors really pop and it's so vibrant. But either way, any game that I've played on here runs really smoothly, and that 120Hz refresh rate looks great from those consoles. Then other games that aren't necessarily running at 120Hz still play smoothly. So I mentioned earlier that there are LEDs on the back of this panel, which gives us a nice ambient glow while gaming. Now out of the box, these are purple, but in the settings, you can adjust the color to any other color you wish. I actually think the purple is probably the best color choice to go for, so that's the one that I'm going to stick with. So at night they look really nice, but the only downside that I can see is you cannot adjust the brightness level. This really is as bright as they will go. And that means with the screen being as bright as it is with that display HDR 1000, it's not quite the same as having an LED strip on the back. Now, not only is this a perfect gaming monitor, it actually doubles up as a great productivity monitor. That IPS panel means it's got incredible colors, decent sharpness, and a low input lag. Connect a PC or laptop using an HDMI or display port, and you've got yourself a monitor that can do both. It is missing a USB-C port though, so I'm not able to connect and charge my MacBook at the same time. So in this case, I'm using the HDMI port, which means I'm not able to take advantage of the full 120 hertz refresh rate, as unfortunately the MacBook is limited to 60 hertz over HDMI. But refresh rate aside, this 32 inch monitor works really well for productivity. It's probably the best non ultra wide size to go for when it comes to work. The text is sharp, and I wasn't able to see any artifacts around the text either. And if you're using the display port for say PC, you'll get the maximum refresh rate and a great image quality. I would happily use this for working on every day. And as for the stand, it's got all of the usual adjustments you would expect to see. So with a little effort, it will move up and down. It will then tilt forwards and backwards. So if you want to face it up or down, you can do it this way. And the final adjustment is it will pivot left and right. So this is ideal for making sure it's level. The only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't swing side to side. So if you want to point it left or right, you will need to move the entire stand. Then looking at the feature, we've got the LG logo on the left side, and then we've got the bright green NVIDIA G-Sync logo on the right. But this is just a sticker, so you can remove it very easily. And around the back to keep your cables out of sight, there's this little plastic bracket that clips onto the back. So all you need to do is feed your cables through this, and it means from the front, then you're not able to see those cables hanging down. But if you don't want to use the provided stand that comes with this monitor, it does also have 100 by 100 VESA holes. So if you grab yourself a different stand or a monitor arm, you're able to install it this way. And while we're here, if we take a look at the ports on the back, so it comes with two HDMI 2.1 ports. This is ideal for the PlayStation 5 as well as the Xbox Series X. Then there's a DisplayPort 1.4, one upstream USB 3.0, and two downstream USB 3.0 ports. And something that you cannot see easily is there's also a four pole headphone out under the screen. And this gives you virtual 3D sound as well as DTS headphone X support. It's not something that I will personally use, but it's definitely an awesome feature to have included. Okay, let's take a look at the settings and the menus on this screen. So under the screen, there's this little joystick-like button that if you press it, it turns the monitor on and off as well as accesses the settings. Now, the settings and the menu on the GQ950 are very similar to what we've seen before. You can choose from a list of presets or adjust the brightness and contrast as you need. There are also various other settings like enabling a crosshair if you're playing an FPS game, or if you wanted to see what the frame rate was as you're playing a game, we can enable that in here as well. Or you could also adjust the response time from fast to faster, and this is what gets you close to that one millisecond response time. And then if you go ahead and you select the game mode from the option, this is the gaming overlay that we now see. And this shows you what the game is running at, including VRR or the frame rate again, which is a really nice feature. 
And with all of that said, is the 32 GQ950 worth buying? Well, if you're looking for a 32 inch gaming monitor that is rapid with up to 160 hertz capability, it looks great and doubles up as a decent productivity monitor, this is pretty hard to pass on. Sure, there are bigger screens out there, such as the 42 inch C2 OLED. I feel the 32 inch really is the sweet spot for both gaming and work. It's not too big or too small. And as I mentioned, having used this now for the last month or so, this will be replacing the 27 inch GP950. I've been using that for the last nine months and this new one definitely is better overall. I love the bigger screen, the better and brighter panel, as well as this awesome gaming design. Now I might even do a comparison of the GP950 against the GQ950 to see what the differences are. But let me know what monitor you're using now or if you would pick one of these new ones up. Now drop a nice gaming monitor in the comments and I will give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my gaming desk setup video next, as it covers everything in this setup, including the chair, the desk and all the accessories. Thanks for watching, please like, sub and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.